people. And if we dissenter the word from, like, you know, that we get back to that, what's been really interesting about these moments when people have gone to these spaces and tried to directly self-govern themselves is that people have actually been doing it as people, not as masses, not as parties, not as top-down organizations. But there's also a shift going on in which revolutionary transformation is actually happening in a way that allows for that profound politics of dignity that Hollowell was talking about, the self-determining Hollowell. Self-determination that brings in what anarchists have understood for a long time, where we have this like, direct relationship to us creating a world, deciding about the world we want together. Okay, so I think I'm almost at time. Um, so I want to just end with saying um, what can get lost in this moment where there's a sense of possibility of decentering the way people look at politics through the lens of a state, which has become so hegemonic, this can get lost in an anarchist term. I'm going to use this place based on the title in two ways. On the first hand, it can get lost by anarchists themselves. Um, when we look at things like Madison and go, well, after three weeks, what happened? They just left. So there's still many of the liberals. They're still like kind of obedient to the state. What has it really changed? We miss that there's this impulse and a zeitgeist again that we're part of this pushing past people looking to others outside and to figure out ways to govern. Did Madison create a revolution and transformation? No. Did everyone become an anarchist or a radical? No. But if we ignore this impulse to trying to get at shifts in the state that actual people are feeling and carving out for themselves, and if we don't see our role in participating in creating weight structures that then people are using, people practice non-hierarchical, non-statist forms of creating community for three weeks in Madison. And to some degree, we as anarchists should feel validated, not just validated, but also feel how much we've contributed to that. And there were anarchists in that space. I also don't want to minimize the fact that there were people there that were anarchists. Um, so one is when the world catches up to us and starts de-radicalizing the things that we've been pushed, that we don't want to lose the tradition. So I'm going to go back to Hannah Rens' quote. If it's a lost treasure, we as anarchists can't participate in getting it, having it get lost either. So our role, in a sense, is to actually be like, okay, maybe people kept, are catching up to the things that we found to be revolutionary. Now we need to push farther and push past that. Um, so what would it look like to actually have spaces like what happened in Madison happen every day or more often? and have those be the dominant form of how we govern. That's the task of anarchists. So we need to push past that, but we shouldn't turn our backs on it. So I'm, I'm kind of, us trying to hold on to a treasure and hoard it as if anarchists are the only ones that know how to self-govern is a problem, or could become a problem. That's an anarchist term I don't want to see, where we ourselves hide, hide this moment of like self-governance. But the other term is within things like political philosophy, um, where it becomes where I think anarchists have played a large role and are hopefully going to play a larger role in decentering this idea that the state is central to political philosophy, which it has been. It's almost been this hegemonic, it's unquestioned that if you're studying politics, the state is just there, that we don't study things outside that. Um, but I, what's to some degree um, disturbing is that when that is, it's become something that gets caught up to and sees that as a subject of study as opposed to, a, as Andre said, a lived tradition, a way to transform the world. Um, so two things I just wanted to point to besides, you know, we could point to all sorts of ways this happened, but I was interested yesterday in two things that kind of struck me, and they were little kind of micro examples of how it's really hard when things become brought into spaces where political philosophy's role has largely, in a sense, of, of modern political philosophy has been to actually sustain sustain and not question the state centricity. Um, and it's an interesting thing here when even when the questioning is happening, when it's disconnected from the social reality of everybody being able to philosophize and practice what the world would look like, that it's still hard to get rid of sort of how we understand. So the term here that disturbs me is when it actually takes the politics out of anarchism. And that happens in really subtle ways. And it's not meant to I know, enjoy many of the presentations or some, a lot of the ideas in it. But some little things, little examples. Um, Kiara had said yesterday that one of the roles of anarchism had been to, the anarchist of tradition had tried to liberate knowledge for everybody, make it a common, make it a gift, something we can all do together, which is trying to you know, provoke, trying to provoke today in a certain way. And that now that's really hard because knowledge has been, become part of the system of domination. But it's, it always has been that way. It's always been both part of the system of domination and part of liberation. And if we assume that knowledge is equivalent to the university, which is what it felt like that was saying, then we've already actually undemocratized in the direct way knowledge. <laughs> really subtle assumption that knowledge happens here, right? Okay. Um, which is a non-democratizing, okay. not two minutes. Okay. 
Um, the other example I wanted to use was the idea, and I can't even pronounce the word, so let me just say, eating together, um, where we create spaces where it's a new concept that people are thinking about eating together, and anarchists, if anything, anarchists have over-theorized and over-practiced and overdone, and we can critique ad nauseum, but also find beauty in it, it's food. Um, <laughs> anarchists do food really well. Ec ecology, agriculture, eating together, sharing together, understanding that food is a commodity, that it's something held, and should. anarchists try to free it, make it everybody, and they always have food that they've made at events, and the contrast between not having food here and also, which is not, and also, it was just, but what was interesting to me is it really shows, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just trying to show these really subtle ways in which we, we're talking about we should have sociality around food, but we actually don't. And that, and as an anarchist, we do. And that's in a way where we democratize every space by we say, no, but it's just as important for us to have food in spaces because we're actually trying to create social relations and new forms of social organization. And to not even mention the history of anarchism and food politics, kind of astonished me again. So how do we understand who deals with food? We need to decenter and, and democratize it. Okay, now I've gone over my time as usual. So I want to end with the last thing is that my, the, it's not just that this is an anarchist moment, and I don't also want it to be an anarchist turned away from anarchism, but this is a moment when I think we're in a place of anarchist transformation, where anarchism isn't by itself. Increasingly autonomous Zapatistas, do-it-ourselves revolutionaries, ultra-leftists, council communists, queers, a whole bunch of other people who are all actually fighting to disperse power around the world are more and more coming to converge in terms of ideas. I start out with John Holloway. I think he's probably more Marxist than anarchist, but he comes through Zapatismo, and I couldn't even tell when I was reading his book, and I love that. And he's a, like, I don't care whether he's an anarchist or not. James Scott did an interview with a journal called Up in the Ante, and at the end of it they said, would you call yourself an anarchist? And I think he said something I can't quite remember. I think he said if you held, I was about to die or he held a gun to my head. Yeah, I guess I would say an anarchist, but he goes, that doesn't capture the beauty of what's happening right now in terms of people trying to govern their worlds together without states. And I hold, Andre had said we're a minority, but what I think is we're the carrier pigeons of the tradition, all of us together, of this beautiful tradition of people themselves deciding, doing and deciding the world together. And if anything political philosophy should be concerned about, it should open up space outside of this space, all over the place, to actually decide how we want to decide about the world. And that is the true moment, sort of, of not just democratizing how we think about the world, but beginning to democratize actually doing it in a very unmediated, direct, participatory, where, where we actually are making the world ourselves, where we actually are doing the the self-governance of, of how we think about it, not actually how we create space. So I hope that that's the key. I would love it now if we could actually have an anarchist moment here and figure out a way, I'm not sorry to talk about my time. This is why I'm in a lot of activist spaces in San Francisco. I was just at something where they had this little slogan on the wall that said, move up, move up your talking, move up your listening. And that they were like, instead of, if you talk too much, shut up. If you don't ever talk, you need to speak more, both of which seem really awful. And I love the way it's like, Think about speaking better, um, and think about listening and hearing better. And to, again, this is this moment of anarchists actually asking us to like, what do we understand self-governance to be? So I hope we can do that in this space about who thinks about how they speak and how we speak to each other and who how we listen to each other would be really nice. So I'd love it if we'd actually focus on the subject of uh, what it looks like to have a non-status forms of political philosophy.